Hey everyone, welcome to Carrie's Garage, and on this episode we're going to finally check out the Suburban. We're going to check out the 91 Suburban, walk around a little bit, talk about it, I'm going to go over a little bit of the backstory, I've got a bit of history with this particular vehicle, and then we're going to talk about what my plans are with it. So here it is. This is a 1991 GMC Suburban SLE four-wheel drive half ton. It is equipped with a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated diesel with a 700 R4 four-speed automatic. I do apologize. It is a little windy today. Trying to cut down on the wind noise a little bit, but I'll see the best I could do. So this Suburban is pretty well loaded. It was ordered new at a dealership in Bozeman, Montana, and from what I understand, it was used as a dealer service shuttle, basically, so they really wanted to check mark all the goodies on it to, you know, really show off the Suburban. Kind of a, an interesting rare badge right there, the Suburban with the diesel 6.2 liter on it. It does have the barn doors on the back, which is one of my personal favorites. I'm not really a fan of the tailgate trucks, really. It does have the alloy wheels. Some aftermarket running boards, which I do need to fix. They're a little bit loose, but I actually really do like those. It does need a little bit of body work. It was used quite a lot. And if you notice, it has a Chevy grill and a red hood. Kind of a story on that was uh, the previous owner to me, basically, they used it for a long time and the wife was driving in Seattle and uh, had a little incident with the Seattle City bus. We'll get into a little bit of that story later. One of uh, the great things I love about this is it has a hood emblem, it says 6.2 liter diesel on it. Most of the vehicles I have have some sort of a European license plate on it. So even this has a French license plate. This particular one is actually made for an American vehicle driven in France. A good friend of mine travels out there a lot and uh, got that one for me. Kind of custom made. It's uh, the top letters are my initials and it's got a date and I don't really remember what it was all about. We'll start off back here and take a look. does have the spot right there for the third row seat, which I do not have. I would like to find one at some point. So that the doors are open. It is plagued with the droopy headliner. So at some point in the fairly near future, I'm gonna tear out the entire headliner and I'm gonna redo it. And one of the cool things I have, which is the only option this wasn't ordered with, is the uh, rear air conditioning unit. Fairly recently, I actually found all the parts for the rear air unit with all the matching blue trim pieces. So at some point, I'm going to get that all plumbed and hooked up. There's one of the SLE Suburban badges. The middle bench. The interior overall seat upholstery-wise is in fairly good condition. One of the weird things, I have no idea what happened here, but... The seatbelt was cut, so at some point I do want to find an entire new set of blue seatbelts. So if anyone out there has any or has a lead on them, do definitely do let me know. On the interior, it was ordered with power door locks, power windows, the power mirrors with these bigger style mirrors. The reason why there's electrical tape on this one is the mirror started ungluing itself and it was going to fall out one day and I just haven't gotten around to fixing it. I need to order some new mirror adhesive. And of course, you can't have a malaise era vehicle without the great tacky fake wood. It does have the full gauge set, so you got a battery gauge, oil pressure, temperature. It does have the six digit odometer, so this rig has 242,568, which I believe to be completely accurate. It's the factory diesel gauge. At some point, I know there's a way to do it. I've seen people do it. You can actually get the medium duty and get the tachometer in there. And then the fuel gauge gets moved under the tachometer section. So at some point, I'd like to find one of those gauges and kind of do a custom gauge cluster with a rev counter. And then, of course, 
you got the great General Motors air conditioning controls. You just get temperature, what kind you want, the fan speed. I mean, everything the GM made for a long time used that style of controls. And then it has an aftermarket Blaupunk CD player, which it works well, but it is a bit dated. Got the switches for the rear defog. This was ordered with the rear heat option, not the rear air conditioning option. So what I'll do is I'll just get a different switch for the rear air and take the rear heat uh, switch out. You know, coming from Montana, having more heat is obviously better than more air conditioning. But down here in the Southwest, I'd like to have the dual air. The dashboard is cracked. Thankfully, you can get all this stuff fairly easily. So I'll replace the dashboard at some point. Kind of a weird angle, but it does have the above console unit with the map lights. I honestly have no idea what you'd store in here. Maybe cassettes or CDs or something. I, I really don't know. And instead of a bench, it does have the dual captain's chairs with the armrest and the center console with the lock on it. This thing, it's cool, but it drives me nuts. With a little bit of wheel vib vibration, that thing just rattles. And I've heard a lot of people say that's a common thing with it. It's the four-wheel drive shifter. This has a NP241C transfer case. And you know, kind of like my Lincoln, vehicles of this era, you know, it's it's got a lot of blue in it does have the, the higher level trim mat pockets and the carpet on the bottom. This being a high trimmed vehicle, it had all these nice little touches to it. At some point, somebody removed the roof rack from it and it also had one of those rear air diffusers that went up here, funnel air down here to keep dust off the back glass. And here is the mighty 6.2 liter naturally aspirated diesel. This guy right here is the cruise control vacuum pot that pulls the throttle when you got the cruise on. I need to replace the indicator stock with the cruise control buttons on it because that one's not getting power, so it's not currently working. When I got it, it was missing the air conditioning compressor and all the brackets, so I found most all those parts. I just need to get a little bit of plumbing, and I can finally get the air conditioning all hooked up. Overall, since I've had it, I really haven't had to do much, just normal maintenance. I did have to put a new master cylinder in and one wheel wheel cylinder was leaking that I had to replace. Now this being a half ton, 6.2, there's some solenoids right there which are all disconnected. That's for the emissions control for the EGR. So this will, I don't know why I put the light back in, but it will throw a check engine light because that stuff doesn't work and then it goes out. So I need to kind of remedy that at some point. I do want to get a J-code, which is the three-quarter ton and heavy-duty intake manifold without the EGR port in it. It does have J-code heads, but the intake is still off of a C-code. So on half-ton trucks, you would get what they call the C-code, which 6.2s six are 6.2s, six but there was a few minor differences. The C-code ones had a bit more emissions control stuff with it, with an EGR and some other stuff on it. J-codes were three-quarter ton, one ton, medium-duty. Those were completely emissions-free. So this being an older vehicle, I don't need emissions on it. So I'm just going to delete all that stuff. It kind of helps out with the performance just a little bit. Go ahead and start it up so we can uh, hear the old clackety indirect injected diesel. Kind of the glow plug light right there. Now, a lot of people poo-poo the 6.2 diesel, but for the era and what it was, it's an absolutely fantastic engine. It is not a powerhouse by any stretch of the imagination, but it gets really good fuel mileage and it tows fairly well as long as you don't put huge expectations on it and give it some time. I've towed for many years with 6.2s. This vehicle is not really set up the best for towing. It has really high gears in the rear end. It was kind of made more as a people hauler. And without a trailer, you can get on the highway, do 70, 75 without a problem, and get low 20s for the fuel economy, which I have done before. 
but you put a trailer on it and it does struggle. I would like to possibly re-gear it at some point, put some lower gears on it, but with my 72 GMC, I think that's gonna become the new tow pig, really. Now there is a lot of misconceptions about the 6.2 liter diesel. I've had a lot of people be like, oh, well that's the one that converted from a gas engine. It is not. GM never actually converted a gas engine to a diesel. When they were talking about that, they're referring to the 5.7 liter or the 350 Oldsmobile diesel that you could get in passenger cars and in half ton trucks only for a couple of years. At some point, I would love to get my hands on a Cadillac diesel. It's kind of one of my uh, dream cars. But that engine of in itself, which we can get into more detail later, was not converted from gasoline. It had the same basic design on the block, but it had a diesel-specific block for the high compression. And there were some inherent issues with that, but we won't get into that today. The 6.2 came out in 1982 in trucks only, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton. They used it in some medium duties. It was really to help combat with fuel economy. You get a 350 TBI or even a 305 and the half ton and they, you, you gotta push them kind of hard and they don't get the best fuel mileage. And you could get a big block of course, but at the time with very inexpensive prices on diesel and these 6.2s will get into the 20s without a problem. I've achieved 22 to 23 miles to the gallon out of this truck without a problem at all. One of the inherent issues with this particular setup being naturally aspirated I live at a higher altitude. We're about 5,000 feet or a little bit more up here. So it does fall on its face a little bit at altitude. I've driven it down at sea level and it's quite a bit better. But up here, it lacks a bit of power. At some point, I would like to find a bank sidewinder turbo kit or an ATS turbo kit or even possibly make something a little bit more custom just to get a little bit of boost to kind of help out with the altitude correction. I know some people do the 6.5 turbo, the factory turbo kit on these uh, 6.2s, but in the square bodies with the uh, air conditioning, you can't fit the turbo downpipe where the air conditioning is at, so then you have to modify the air conditioning. So there's a few different options. Unfortunately, some of the stuff has gotten a bit hard to find, but they come up every once in a while. So when kind of money's right, I would like to get a turbo for it. So overall, this is a fairly rare vehicle. This is a last year square body. It was kind of funny, they ran the Suburbans and the four-doors the same time as the new body style, the GMT 400s, and those came out in 88. So this was the last real kind of hoorah of the square body. And it being a diesel, a four-wheel drive, pretty much fully loaded, this is a very uncommon rig. And the story, really, of uh, how I came in to have this vehicle was in 2006, I was up in Seattle with some friends of mine. And a good friend of mine had this Suburban. He had several other Suburbans. And he had to move some stuff around. So he had me drive this. And back then it was beautiful. The paint was amazing. The interior was great. And it was just such a charm to drive. I fell in love with it pretty much instantly. I had it then. I had an 84 military blazer with the 6.2. I've always just been kind of fascinated and in love with the 6.2 diesels. And I'd fascinated about this truck for quite a long time. And he ended up selling it to some friends up there and they drove it for years. The kids drove it to school. They drove it as a family vehicle for a long time. And the reason why the Red Hood and the Chevy Grill exist is in 2017, we were up there and uh, my friends, friends who had the vehicle, they were actually just gonna get rid of it or scrap it, whatnot, because the whole front end was mangled. It had been sitting for a long time. So my friend who loves this Suburban as much as I do ended up buying it back. And uh, while he was up there, found some guy who was parting out a Suburban or a truck and found all the parts and put it back together to kind of, you know, try and save it for the last time, you know, before it got sent off. So we got it running, seemed to do pretty good. And then it sat for a little bit and I had to move some stuff from Phoenix back to Albuquerque. And uh, I got a hold of my friend. And I was like, hey, what are you going to do with that Suburban? He's like, well, I'm probably just going to sell it. So we came up on a deal because I wanted this truck for a long time. I think I pretty much chased it for over 10 years. Made the deal, bought it. He actually ended up bringing it back from Seattle down to Phoenix. And we flew out there, packed it up, and drove it back. It was a little nerve-wracking. It had sat for probably about four years, not really been driven. So just packed it up, checked the fluids, hit the highway, got... 20, 22 miles to the gallon the whole way back. The overdrive 700R4 really does well with the gearing on this. Like I say, not great for towing, but for highway driving, it's absolutely fantastic. I kind of say with this one, it's a functioning project vehicle. This was actually my only vehicle for about a year and a half when I was at different jobs and whatnot. And it was always reliable. It's always ran and drove great. 
But what I would like to do is do the headliner, clean up the interior. I want to strip it all down, paint it, fix all the bodywork, get the roof rack back on it. I would like to manual convert it. I don't like automatics. 700 R4 is great, but I just don't like it. So I'm probably going to end up putting an SM465 four-speed in it. I like to do a five-speed, but there's a bit more work on that one, and I just don't really know if I want to do that right now. But I do want to convert it to a manual. So I need to source out a hydraulic pedal box, the transmission, you know, drive shaft, all those goodies. But that's kind of a project for the future that I do plan on doing. And of course, any of the little missing bits, uh, I'm going to replace those and, you know, just make it really nice. I'd like to really bring this Suburban back to its formal glory and just have it as a really nice truck to drive. Like I say, with my 72 GMC, that's probably going to end up becoming the tow vehicle. So this one's just going to be a great commuter and a fun vehicle to have. But anyways, I think that'll do it for this video. Quick little check out of the 91 GMC Suburban 1500 SLE four-wheel drive 6.2 liter diesel. Tell you what, that's a mouthful. But thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time.